Now comes the fun part. We're going to start dealing with the solid wood and we're going to start with the skirts that are attached around the bottom and up near the top of the chest. This is one of the lower skirts for the ends. And what we're going to do on the table saw is we are going to cut a bevel. Uh, a bevel right here on the, uh, on the end of this uh, board, on the long edge. And this bevel uh, is, I don't, know, I don't know what degree it is, but this is a little more than a quarter inch uh, flat here at the top. And the bevel is an inch uh, deep, an inch from the edge. And uh, we set the table saw to that particular angle. And a couple things that are worth note here on uh, safety for this. Uh, number one is we left the riving knife on. And you can use the riving knife uh, here. You can't have the blade guard over it, but the riving knife is definitely a smart thing because it will keep your uh, bevel from contacting the back of the blade. Uh, really, really important and kicking back from you. The other important thing is that there's just enough of the insert here, uh, where my finger is, that uh, this, uh, this flat can ride across it when it goes through the blade. So there is uh, just enough flat there so that the entire piece does not pitch into the gaping maw of our saw. Um, the other important thing, as you will see, is try not to pass your hand over the blade. Uh, you try to keep it under control as much as you can and try to, uh, you can put your hands at the front and the back of the fence, but try to keep your hands from over the blade, general rules. And all the other rules apply about ear protection, eye protection, and if it feels dangerous to you, don't do it. You can, you can very easily cut this with a block plane. It'll just take you 10 times as long. So we can put that one there. And not only are we going to run the lower skirts, but we're going to run the upper skirts too because it, it's the exact same bevel on all of them. So you want to run one long edge of all the skirt material. So let's talk about how these skirts are going to attach to the case. Um, there are lots of different ways to do this. And after many years of building these, if I want to do it really fast, this I find is the best way to do it. Now you notice that when we screwed the front to the end of the tool chest, we have the front piece overlapping the end. So what we want to do with the skirt is we're also going to use a butt joint but we're going to have the end overlapping the front. And then we're going to screw in through here. So we're going to have this restrained by being screwed in from opposition. So we'll have it being secured this way, and we'll have it secured this way. Now, we could use a miter here. 
And that is a very common and traditional way to do this joint. But I've seen a lot of tool chests uh, in the last 10 years uh, when I've been studying them, and uh, almost all the miters are completely opened up. So instead, I'm going to do a butt joint. I'm going to just butt this against this, screw through here, trim this up, and then I'm going to trim the uh, bevel here with a block plane, maybe a flush cut saw too if I have one, uh, to, to, to match. It'll look fine when it has paint on it. So how are we going to do all this? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to determine the ultimate length of all of these by showing them to the actual work and then cut them to size using the miter saw, or if we don't have a miter saw, we can use a hand saw or we can use even a circular saw and a guide. So the first step is this is going to just be cut flush to the end right here. So I need to cut this piece to exactly the length from here to here. So all I'm simply going to do is I'm going to press the work against here, make sure I've got some hanging over there, it's resting on the bench, and I'm just going to take my pencil, and then I'm going to walk around to the other side, making sure that the piece doesn't move, and I'm going to do the same thing back here. I'm going to repeat that with the other, all the pieces, uh, the front and the back, and then we're going to cut them to length on the uh, miter saw and then screw them in place. The top skirt, which goes up around here, is handled similarly, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Miter saws are great for this operation, for cutting things uh, down to length quickly and reasonably accurately. Uh, before you, you know, get into cutting the project uh, parts to length, uh, make sure that you check the squareness, and each saw has a little way of changing uh, whether it makes a square cut or not. These are notorious for not making square cuts, so don't trust the saw. Trust your square. Um, we are going to cut these on the miter saw by uh, bringing the blade down and showing it to the line, and we want to leave the line here. Uh, it's okay if the skirt is a little long because we're going to fasten it to the chest over there and then we can take a block plane and true it up before we have to add the skirts on the ends. So this is one of the, this is the front skirt I believe. Uh, yep, it's the front skirt. So leave the line. Uh, you don't want to leave a whole bunch of uh, meat behind, but just, just enough so the block plane will take care of it. Uh, the other thing I like to do, uh, learn this from Mark Adams, and it's another safety uh, tip, is when you use the miter saw, you bring it down, don't, don't jam it down, bring it down smoothly, and then before you let it up, let it power down. And uh, that's much more, that's much safer there rather than bringing the spinning blade back up. So uh, just another little safety tip. And of course, eye protection, ear protection, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, here we go. So we left the line, so we'll turn it around, do the same thing over on this side, being sure to leave the line. Oops. Slider didn't quite get all that, but I will trim that back with a knife or with a Black plane or chisel. This is the back rear skirt. Leave the line. Now we get out the screw gun again and the glue bottle and get these attached to the front and the back of our carcass. All right, here we have the lower skirt that's cut to length. It's a little bit overlong. 
good thing. As you can also see, it's, it's nice and warped. Nah, that never happens. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to screw the ever-loving snot out of it to, uh, to the uh, tool chest. And we have marked out some uh, shot lines here. And we are going to first apply a whole bunch of glue. Not too much, but a whole bunch of glue. And then we are going to get it right in position. And then we're going to screw it down. And I'm going to use my uh, lovely assistant, Ty, to help me. So. Um, now, I don't want too much glue coming out the ends. I do just want it, I do want it to stick. So that's why I'm staying away from the, uh, from the edges here. God, that's beautiful. Okay. So I'm gonna screw down my corner first, and then I'll work my way over towards Ty. So you flush at the bottom? Yes. Okay. Okay, I have about this much over, is that? Mm -hmm. Okay, just, okay, you ready? Okay. So here we go, same inch and a quarter screws, same bit, same everything. One thing I'm being careful to do when I laid out all these screws all the holes for the screws is to avoid the screws below them so that you don't try to screw into a screw, which is bad. So I'm going to put that in there. Okay. How are we doing over there? Still good. Okay. And as you can see, this is why it's great to have two drills. So once I get these guys in, oh good, it pulled that warp out. Once I get these in, I can start moving a little faster by drilling more than one hole at a time. But you always want to get those first two holes so everything is lined up. So this is just about a 64th, maybe a 30-second proud all the way across, which a block plane can easily take care of that. Now you can see that I position these screws to avoid the screws below. So I'm between these two screws. Okay, long monkey arms come in handy. Let's just get that line in first. So there's really not much more uh, to it than putting in a bunch of screws. Um, once you get the ends lined up, it's all good. So after I get these in place, Ty will put his end in place. Then we'll work on the ones near the bevel. And then we'll do the skirt that goes on the back side. All right. So we've got the front and the back skirts attached. And now we can flush them up. You can, if you have a, a block plane with a sharp iron, that's the, certainly the easiest way to do it. Uh, if you have a uh, random orbit sander, that will do it. Or uh, I'm sorry if you have only a... Uh, sanding block. So we're going to flush these up to the case side, and this one is a little more out than the others. When you flush up end grain, uh, if it's giving you trouble, uh, moisten it with some denatured alcohol, uh, and that'll make life a little easier. And as you can see, I'm not planing all the way through. Um, that would spelch or break out the end. So I'm going to work most of it this way, and it's starting to come to flush there. And then when I've done all I can here, then I'll turn around 
and flush up the other way. And that will keep it from breaking out on me. I can also plane a small chamfer like that, and that also works, so I don't have to change positions so much. So after I get all these flushed up, the next order of business is to cut the ends to length. And we're going to do it just the same way we did the front and the back, is that we'll show it to the work, we'll take the pencil, and we'll mark the length here, mark the length here, take them to the chop saw, cut them to length, screw them on, and then we'll come back and take a look at how to deal with this little return here. Real simple stuff. But first, got to finish flushing up. As you can see, we've made a lot of progress here uh, with the skirts. We got uh, not only all the bottom skirts on, but we also used the exact same processes of cutting uh, to fit the top, this top skirt. And it is down one half inch from the top edge of the uh, entire chest carcass. So once you get all these glued and screwed in place, the next real step is to get rid of this ugliness, these, uh, these bevels that overhang. And the best way to do it is to go to the home center and get a flush cut saw. But if you're not willing to get a flush cut saw, you can do it with a regular hand saw, you can do it with a chisel, you can do it just straight with a block plane, but this is probably the fastest and tidiest way to do it. So you just press your fingers against the blade. There's no set on the teeth and uh, just so it won't mar the work and you just gently pull. Most of them cut on the pull stroke. to use a hand tool after all that drilling. Um, and once that is flushed up, then you can take your block plane and trim that to that, and then trim any slight overhang all around, uh, flush, and then you're pretty much done with the skirts. And then the whole carcass is all done. So that's pretty amazing. This usually takes about 40 or 50 hours of work if you do this all by hand uh, and with dovetails. And here we've done it in, uh, gosh, maybe three or four hours at most. Uh, so real fast process. And now we can turn our attention uh, to the lid, which is also going to be a piece of plywood with another piece of plywood attached to it. Real easy stuff.